All righty. Well, I've got a special guest today, so welcome to the Lion Academy. I have Ruben Williams. How are you, brother? Good, thanks, mate. Good, good. If you've seen any of our, our marketing at the moment, Ruben and I are mates from from coming to uh, a men's circle to start with, where it was a space where men could come and talk. Obviously, I do mental health stuff. Uh, the owner of the circle asked me to come and listen in. Ruben and I become mates. Our family started connecting, and I had seen this bald guy probably every day of my life walking down Victoria Avenue at the same time I'm dropping my kids off, and I find out that he is your brother, Jesse. Please explain this bald guy headphone, the, the, this whole thing. Oh, mate, I think um, ever, ever since he's been uh, been younger, he's um, he's always worn headphones and listened to music. Um, I don't know whether that's his, you know, that's a sort of a, escape and he can just, he, he gets in a certain zone and he's, um, yeah, for as long as I can remember, he's he's either had headphones on or he'll, he'll go down to his bedroom and he'll he'll play music and he'll sing. Like I guess it's his way of uh, like listening to you know songs in the world. It's how he lets it in, I suppose, and then he he verbalizes and gets stuff out by by singing. Like we're wow. not talking singing in tone. I'm talking yeah. like <laughs> some pretty serious, you know, singing the house down sort of stuff. And that's I guess that's always been his little um his little thing that he's had. You know, to, to it's probably to let to let stuff out to to verbalize in a way. You know, like no one's le- no one's listening. He can't see anyone, and he's. He's always listened and sung. So, um, yeah, that's probably where it's, you know, that's sort of where it originated. And it was a hard case because I, no, I, that's the way I drive every morning when I drop my daughter off at her school. And I, so I'd always recognize him. I was wondering, wonder what that guy's listening to. And then at the circle, you know, you bring him along and say, This is my brother Jesse. He's um, representing New Zealand in, in, in the Special Olympics for swimming. And I'm like, Hey, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you're not the first person to say that either. Like, there's so many people, you know, because he, he might walk down there, you know, school drop off, a busy time. And there's so many people that, and his routine, you know, so he's he's every day, whenever he's got work, he's, he's doing it. He doesn't miss any days. Um, and that, that's his routine. So, and so many people will say, I know that guy. I've seen that yep. guy, you know, he yep. walks up and down there at the same time on this day and that yep. day. And he's always listening to his headphones and, yeah, that's just what he does. And, and he does walk around a lot. And a lot of people do see him around the place. Oh, that's awesome. Now, people are getting onto this train now that he, you know, we're, we're fundraising to try and get him over to the to the Olympics in, in Germany. But I want to sort of, I want to come all the way back because I know you and I know a little bit about your family story. And you're, you're an inspiration to heaps of us, brother, just with your story. But I don't know the story between you and your brother. Look, I know he's he's representing New Zealand. It's a big deal, but I don't know a lot about the brotherly stories. Is your older brother? Is your younger brother? Where did you grow up? How, how does this even start? Yeah, so Jess is uh, he's two years older than me. So he's 39 this year. Um, and we oh, we probably grew up just like like any other brothers did, really, to be honest. Um it was uh we grew up in the Wairapa in Masterton. We we sort of we were both born over there and we went to school over there till we were about seven, I suppose, then we moved over to Palmy. Um and it was pretty normal, you know, those that sort of one to or that, you know, being a toddler through to intermediate school. It was it was pretty normal brotherly sort of stuff. You know, there's only the two of us, so you wanted someone to hang out with and play with that's you had to make it work that's that's just what all we knew so you know you, you if that's all you know you always make it work and yeah there wasn't uh, he was sort of always the older brother but it was sort of my role to I don't know to to be that older brother uh sometimes so uh yeah I look back on it and it's it's been it's been enjoyable and and very we both see it I know he does we see it as, as pretty normal like yeah. it's our our normal, so it's it's yeah. you know when everyone has their own normal, it, it's like it's just what it is. Yep. Now you guys still show that now, and and I just I just love this bit about Jesse because we're in the circle and then everyone finds out hey that's the guy, and then look he's representing New Zealand in the Olympics, bro. So it's a, it's a big deal. So everyone's fascinated. Yeah. Yeah. And a guy you and I know really well, Jim Siamani, is probably the nicest guy on the planet. He turns to Jesse's like, "Hey, bro, is there anything that we can do to help, and anything that we can do for you?" And Jesse's like, you need. "He's like, nah, I'm all good." <laughs> <laughs> and from the moment he said that, I was like, 
I'm really interested to hear this story because he's he's not the dude that's running around and asking for help or feeling sorry for himself. And the dude would swim there by himself if he had yeah. to get there, right? He's just he's got that mindset, but he's got Down syndrome, and so I don't know anything about Down syndrome at all, bro. How was that growing up? Because it's your normal um, Kiwi background, Down syndrome. First and foremost, what's it like? Because he he looks different. He does, yeah. How's um, that growing up, and how does that work? Yeah, I mean, he's a very, you won't get, he's a man of, you know, not many words. Like you ask him something, that's probably where that answer comes from. He doesn't, he doesn't give away a hell of a lot. He sort of has to be very comfortable, you know, with people and in his surroundings to to start actually chatting, you know, he's not a real chatterbox. Um, so when you ask him, you know, is there anything you need? His, yeah, he'll, there's probably things he needs and wants, but it's just his his default. He he will say, "Oh no, I'm fine, I'm fine," and he'll just carry on, you know, with his yep. with his mission, his life mission. He's always just, you know, turned around and carried on, you know, because that's what he has to do to survive. He just has to get on with it. Um, yep. But as yeah, as far as Down syndrome, that's uh, wow. Well, what what was the question again? Edit that out. I mean, like most people don't know what it is, and like I know a lot of people around the world. I'm exposed to a lot of, a lot of different networks. I don't know anything about Down syndrome apart from that they look different. And and for someone like me, that includes every single human being that I come across. I still have a conversation in my mind. If I see someone that looks different um, that, than everyone else, I want to make sure that I acknowledge their presence. I don't want to make them feel um, embarrassed or uncomfortable, and it should be exactly the same. But the fact that I'm having that thought process says it's not exactly the same. So yeah, I, I think, think if, you're, if you're used to, I suppose, someone in your family being a little different or... If, yeah, if you're used to it, you sort of, you know, you deal with it and it just becomes sort of second nature. So growing up, it was, like I said, those early years are pretty, pretty standard, pretty normal, you know, and, and then, you know, kids can, kids can be cruel when it gets to that, you know, that's just when other kids are learning about themselves and the world as well. So, so things are said, you know, people stare. Um, that was probably a big thing. Well, it wasn't a big thing really, but, it, you know, that one thing I did notice was when we were younger, a lot of people did stare. Yep. Um, but you know, mum and dad, they were just, well, it is what it is. Get on with it. Like, you know, steer back, do whatever you want. Like it was, they sort of left it up to us to figure out. It wasn't, yep. you know, we, we don't need to go out there and go, what are you looking at? Or you just, you just get on with what you've got to do and what you've got to achieve. Um, but yeah, down syndrome, it's a, it's an extra chromosome. So like, I'm not too versed in the whole, you know, science or, or the medical sort of stuff, but it's an extra chromosome and they generally got um, uh, intellectual disabilities. And as far as physical disabilities go, they're, they're generally pretty, pretty good. Um, and it's probably a case of, you know, use it or lose it like anyone. Um, but Jess has been very active his whole life and that's always been not pushed on him, but that's just how he is and he enjoys a healthy lifestyle. So um, it's sort of, you know, that's his, that's his thing is, you know, eating healthy, eating clean and, and he's an athlete really. So yep. being an athlete and you've got to live that lifestyle if you want to compete. And the slang that I hear you say all the time is, is you know, it's no different having a brother with Downs and just having a brother. It's just our thing. And so the term Downs is what you guys use just to e e explain the condition, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do we always say? It's he has, you know, he has Down syndrome. He's not like it's not. It doesn't define him, you know. So it's it's just a what do you call it? It's a condition, I suppose. Yeah. So he, um, but that's sort of he himself has always thought he's very he he wants to be normal as possible. You know, he he doesn't view himself. Well, he doesn't want to view himself as as different to other people. Um, and he doesn't really. He's always wanted to be, oh, I want to be like you, you know. I want to do what you and your friends are doing, you know. Can I buy the same clothes or wear the same thing? Can I come? Can I come? You know, that was big growing up. Oh, can I come? And a lot of the times back then, it'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, you know. You, you might say, no, nah, I'm busy or, you know. And that's sort of where a lot of the, um, they get isolated as well. Um yeah because it's a real patience game like anyone was you know well some sort of something that's slowing them down a little bit from you know their peers or whatever if someone's prepared to to be patient and take the time with them they're um 
you know, more than capable of, of achieving whatever they want to. But it's, yeah, probably a, a patient, patient game. You got to listen. Yep. And that, that's one thing I love when Jesse first made that comment. But then the other thing that you brought up, and, and, I, and I can't get it out of my head, and, and I think it's just so powerful or so cool, apart from just like, no, oh, man, I'm, I'm good. You'll just crack on and get it done. Is we, you and I just having a normal conversation about this, and you said, "Hey, listen. Most people will say that that those that have Downs have uh, a lower life expectancy." And he's an athlete, bro. Come on now, like he'd run rings around you and I as far as fitness and stuff go. <laughs> that dude's a fit dude, bro. Right? <laughs> and so you actually said, and you're like, "I can't back this up scientifically, Dion," but you said something that I thought was just so powerful as an observation. Would you mind sharing that with everyone? Um, yeah, well, I thought. Typically, they their lifespan is less than you know the rest of the population. I know that nowadays it's you know it has gone up and up and up over the years. Um, and nowadays, I think it's sort of between sixty and sixty to seventy, I suppose. Um, but I don't see any reason why you know there is a, a that limitation put, well, especially on Jess. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't need to be sort of defined or limited by he just gets out there and gets it done and and gets fit so whatever happens i'm sure he'll just you know he'll manage a way manage a way through it and um fitness and being healthy and living a healthy lifestyle is a big one so i can't i can't see him you know any other more so than any other person not living till you know 80. i think there's a i don't know what the record is, is for a the oldest Downs person, but I'm sure he can break it. Yeah, I'm sure if he put his mind to it, he'd break bloody anything. And <laughs> the, the other thing about that conversation you said to me is like, you, you said, I, I wonder if that lower life expectancy back then was because they were isolated and cut away from everyone and, and didn't have that connection. Yeah, I where... think a lot of, you know, like this day and age, or the, probably the last 20 years or so, you know, there's TVs, computers, it's easy to you know, if there's, you've got a social group, your friends don't want to invite you out, you know, you get to an age, you're past primary school, you're intermediate, high school, people know you're different, you know, it takes, it takes some people, or well, people are busy with their friends, so you may get left behind, and you're at home, and you're, that, that cycle, like anyone else's cycle, if, if you know, they're struggling to fit in, they can become withdrawn and isolated, and, and, and that sort of, you know, might come through with with putting on weight or having heart conditions or, you know, lung conditions or something where you are not being active. And that's across the board with the whole population. I wouldn't say that's, you know, that's not just Downs people, but he's made a real effort, you know, to, he still does that, you know, he doesn't have that huge group of friends. He, he probably never will, but he does get out and about and he works and he trains and he walks and anything that he can do to keep himself you know, healthy and fit. So I think that'll go a long way to, you know, to seeing him into his 80s, hopefully. Yeah, well, he's fitter, he's fitter and healthier than all of us, bro. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's, he's representing New Zealand in swimming. Did he have a love of the water to start with? A love of swimming? Or like, where, where do you think his connection with the water comes from? Um, it probably comes back to our folks just growing up in, in the Wairapa. We definitely, you know, went to the local swimming spots the uh, local swimming holes at the rivers and just just had a go, like just jump in and um, and see what happens. So we were allowed to, you know, just just <laughs> go for it really. Um, and then we'd always we'd always go to local pools. The local pool in uh, Masterton had a big stainless steel slide yep. that we always used to go down. And, um, and then swimming lessons, you know, when we were kids, just basic swimming lessons. So we both learned to swim at a pretty young age. And um, whenever we'd go away on holidays, we'd always go to local pools and we both just enjoyed enjoyed the water. Um, and, it, you, you know, you can grow your confidence by by knowing how to handle yourself in the water. And and he's he's great in the ocean as well. He can swim in oh, waves. Okay. He, can, he can duck dive. He can swim out in waves. Um, I'm pretty sure he got caught in a rip one day and didn't think much of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just floating out the back. Um, so yeah, we've always both of us have enjoyed the water and enjoyed swimming, and he's just just carried that on through Special Olympics. Has been sort of a uh, a gateway for him to, you know, pursue it as a sport and keep himself fit and healthy. 
Was there a was there a hinge point you could put your finger on when you went from just enjoying the water to to starting to train and getting competitive? Um, I think it probably when he was about uh, fourteen or fifteen, and then he really started competing in that that special Olympics scene, and they would um, you know they'd go away to swim meets, and a lot of this was sort of organised by the local uh, Mana or two special Olympics, so it was really a yeah a perfect gateway for him to to find that sort of competitive edge I suppose as as far as Special Olympics it's not the most competitive it's more celebrated just participating you know and, and getting out there and, and doing something other than sitting at home on the couch like so but he he's probably not the most competitive guy out there but he does enjoy you know just being there with with other people and his peers just just giving it a go well you've got to have that connection that belonging every every human being needs that for sure but still he's it's a high standard, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can see, you can say it's, yeah, it's not that it's not that competitive. It's about participation. There's probably not too many people in Palmy that could could keep the routine that he has. So, talk talk me through his routine because look, we're getting behind this just because I want to celebrate people that are battlers. You know, like I mean, look, this we could get behind lots of different people for lots of different things, but from the moment that gesture said, "No, I'm good," to me now recognizing who he is and how often I've seen that guy. He's he's an inspiration as a human being. Not that he's got downs, like there's no special Olympics. Obviously a celebration getting to that level, but this is a human being that with the cards that he's been dealt is playing the game that he wants to play. No excuses, no crying about it. I'm sure there'd be some down times, but that's the energy we want to get behind and, and absolutely celebrate. And of course, you know, this is you're talking to a, an ex-military guy, you know, brotherly love is, is the thing that that drives us. The love for our brother is what drives us to to kill or 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 defend someone or to die for someone. You know, you don't leave your brother behind and, and you're your brother's keeper. So all the energy behind this is nothing but empowerment. Mm. You know, and, and as an example, this isn't a look, if we don't get behind Jess and help it, he's not gonna make it. Dude's making it every day. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Tell, this is um like when it sort of first came about, it was yeah, like you're saying, I couldn't, I just had to get behind this. And it is so, you know, for me and him and a lot of people I know, this is just so, it's so normal. Like, you know, it's, he's going to the Olympics. You can't not go. He will achieve it and get behind it. It's a big deal. Like you say, it is just as good as, you know, any of, any of my friends, you know, going to, going to the, the Olympics or the Paralympics, like, this is this is his lane and this is he's achieved the highest he can in it you know so yeah. it's a massive achievement and i just want to celebrate it as being you know just as good as any other achievement by any other sportsman in new zealand it's sort of to us it's no different you know he is he's achieved that and he's going and it's yeah we need to get behind it and people people should know about it like you know it's a, it's a pretty special story um yeah, and, and I've seen sort of the right time to to celebrate him, you know, because yeah. I, I know his whole, you know, his whole backstory, his whole life. But if he won't speak up and tell anyone, yeah. Um, so we've I've got to just just celebrate him, you know, like you say, he's a brother, um, and it all starts with family, that bond. So you just got to yeah, you celebrate your brothers, like your siblings, no matter you know, to me, no matter what 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 or who they are, it's just. It's just you how you always back each other up, you know. You, you've got to back each other. Whether it's a schoolyard fight, you get in trouble. Don't tell mom and dad. You're like you, you back each other up, brothers and brothers, brothers and sisters. Like you, you back your family. My wife was supposed to arrive in Palmerston North last night from Australia. I'm um, at nine thirty last night. Flight gets cancelled, so they put her on a flight to Wellington. I ring my sister like, sis, I need some backup. Thought, she goes, what's going on? Tan's arriving in Wellington. Can you pick her up, bring her to your apartment? I'll throw the kids in the car and I'll drive down to Wellington. So we hit Wellington at midnight last night. My sister's got out of bed, grabbed my wife, got her down to the apartment, got her in the car with the kids, and I'm driving everyone back. You back your family up, right? You do. You do. Yeah. But what's you really funny now is like, your brother's going to the Olympics, and you're like, oh, can I come? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like coming yeah. in one circle, eh? We'll tag along. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I tag along? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so so what we're doing and and the line academy is getting behind it. We wanna we wanna we wanna share this, and this is mainly gonna happen on LinkedIn. If you're watching this on Facebook, we've just shared it amongst our tribe here because it's cool. Um, over on LinkedIn, where we're doing business deals over there. So I think we've got thirteen thousand left to go, yeah, uh, left to raise. 
there's been yep. some awesome people helping out and you, you've raised a few grand already. Um, so what we're going to do is is for every thousand dollars raised, we're going to donate ten thousand dollars worth of Lion Academy products for organizations. And I'm going to be doing shout outs now because I saw that picture of you and your brother at Carterton Railway Station. Yeah. Well, Ron Mark's now the mayor of Carterton again. Um, ex, you know, um, military was the the minister for veterans and defence. I'll be tagging him on this and saying, "Hey, Ron, a couple of local boys here from just up the road." <laughs> you know, and Ron's story is growing up in foster homes and wider up a bro. So we'll rattle the cages over there. Yeah. I got another really good mate, Darren Brunton, who's the managing director of KBR Group of Companies, and so they're commercial divers. Like he he's he met Carl Brashear. You know that that movie of Cuba Gooding Jr. Men of Honor. You know, when yeah, he's he yeah, a native diver, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's Carl Bashir. Darren's met him. I've just seen pictures of Darren. So he owns that. I'm like, Darren, there's a dude, loves the water. You need to get behind this. Yeah, and so we're just gonna rattle yeah. the cages and because it's it's an empowerment story. Yeah. You no, know, it's just celebrating someone just reaching the pinnacle of their lane and just cracking on. But I need to ask you this question too. He just seems to have this dry sense of humor. Like even when he just said that, I just I caught a bit of side eye when he said it. And I was like, I think there's a joker in there. Has he, has he got that side to him, bro? Oh, good question, Dion. Um, he does, like, again, when he's comfortable, he, he takes a long time to settle in and, you know, open up. And, yeah, I'd love to know what really goes on in that bald head of his because it's... <laughs> uh, who knows, mate? Who knows? But he definitely... He does. He does like a joke. He can. Again, in his old age, he's probably getting a bit toey, and he does, he's yeah. not really too keen. But yeah, he's uh, he can be a hard case. Yeah, like I'm pretty good at reading people, and 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 I just caught a glimpse of. I think this dude sees a lot more than what he's letting on. Yeah, I, I caught a really that, good yeah. side eye. I was just like, all right, I'm watching you, dude. You'd probably get away with it if you tried it on. Yeah. No, I, I know for sure. He he definitely. Um, he definitely gets away with a lot more. He's uh, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good at that. He knows a lot more than we think he does. That's for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, this is a a, a local person from Palmy that's representing New Zealand at, at, at Olympic level. Um, Shree Phillips is a mate of mine. She represented New Zealand as Olympian for hockey, for Paralympian friends, and all that sort of stuff. It's it's a it's a big deal, and it's something worth getting behind and celebrating. So, if you're watching this and you're part of an organisation or you just want to help, there'll be a link. Uh, to this video or wherever you've seen this um, to the Give a Little page. And we're going to just keep promoting that. And then uh, anything extra over and above that's raised uh, in regards, that's going to get donated anyway. So the link that you donate to is an official Give a Little page. Um, and yeah, whatever you got to spare, or if you're part of an organization that wants to get behind and do some some corporate sponsorship, it's only 13 grand left, like far out. It'd be bloody awesome just to, just to see him, you know. I'm enjoying seeing the support for him. Like, yeah, you know, Jim, Jim did yeah. the movie night. Um, Filippo and, and Shara are backing him up at Snapback. Like, people want to get behind this because of it's such a good story. It's, it's, it's a good Kiwi story. Yeah, and we, 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 you know, we get it out there and hopefully out of this, he, he'll make some new friends, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, he's, he's still, he hasn't hit 40 yet. Like, he can still, like, I hope he meets some people and people recognize him and, and go, what, what's his number? Or I'll message him on Facebook or I'll yeah. say, you know, like go out of their way to, hey, bro, do you want to come to the gym? Or, you know, I see you go to the gym. You like working out. Do you want to come with me and my friends? Or, you know, he hopefully make some friends and just, because that's what it's all about as well is, you know, he still wants to get out there and, and meet new people and um, do what everyone else does. It's, uh, he just wants to be as normal as possible, you know, in his own sort of special way. Um, yeah, I think we all need to just get behind him and and enable him to be able to do all that. Yeah, and that's a really important point. Listen, it's tough out there at the moment, money wise. If you can't donate money, donate some flipping some feel good vibes, man. Donate some mm -hmm. love. Um, the Facebook page is at the bald guy, so you can jump on at the bald guy and, and and jump in there and and send some love and say, hey man, I saw the interview with uh, with Ruben and Dion. Just hey man, cash strapped at the moment, but just send you some love. Good luck to you, bro. You know. Oh, a, a comment, man, or a, anything yeah. like that is just as valuable to us. Eh? We, um, and I know he likes it. Like I can see him when he watches it. He think, oh, was that me? Or, you know, this is my Facebook page. Like, yeah, he loves yeah. It. Um, so yeah, a comment, you know, it's just good luck. Anything that's that means a hell of a lot to us too. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're you're a good 
little big brother bro to to, to your to your to your brother uh we love you anyway um and, and we'll get behind you as much as we possibly can and this is not a flash in the pan thing we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll just keep doing it um mm. i keep beeping away even now but no chance when he's got his headphones on right <laughs> just, just no <laughs> right, chance he like, beeping away even now and he's like nah nah, nah he won't hear a thing he's been listening to that on max volume for 20 plus years <laughs> i think his ears are feeling the pinch now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Hey, man, good on you for backing your brother up. Uh, again, look at the links below. You can go to his Facebook page, at the bald guy. The hashtag we're, we're using is my Olympic brother. Ruben's writing an ebook about this journey, so we're going to help him write his ebook and promote that. We'll get behind him on social media, and we'll back him up for the online courses. So if you wanted a sneaky way to get into the academy and, and get some, you know, get get a couple of grand's worth of stuff, donate something to the bald guy, and, uh, and, and let's back up this uh, Olympic brother and this brotherly love. So Thanks for coming on and sharing of yourself and your family, and um, we'll keep sharing this message and, and get them over there. Ah, oh, thanks, Dion. This is um, yeah, it's been awesome having your support and uh, throwing the Lion Academy support behind the whole thing. It's uh, yeah, it's just another vehicle to sort of to get it out to the people, and um, yeah, really appreciate it, mate. Ah, oh, you're very welcome. And it's not going to stop after this. You're going to be updating everyone when he's over there and how he's going and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, totally. Yeah, That's a big dream too. That's a big dream to keep everyone, you know, to watch his journey once he gets there. Yeah, yeah. Jump on the jet train, man. Come for a ride. That's, yeah. That'd be cool, bro. It'd be heaps of fun. Yeah. All right, everyone. You know what to do. Follow the links and uh, watch this. We're going to be posting every single day until we reach that goal, and then we'll do a whole lot of massive thank yous and some special gifts for for some people once we knock that goal over. All right, then. Thank you.